Hey, in this week's episode, we're going back down there in history, a long way back. We're going to sail the seven seas, but also ride down the trails and even go to Civil War. What are we talking about? Survival bread, two different kinds, hardtack and hot water cornbread. Come on, let's get to surviving. Hey, thank y'all for stopping by the wagon for another episode of Cowboy Cooking. My name is Kent Rollins, and whew, we're just glad to welcome you all. Do you like to bring family and food together, share with the friends and the neighbors? Well, that's what it's all about here. So be sure if you are a brand new viewer to here, hit that subscribe button and the dingy dong bill because we don't want you to miss out on none of this today. And whoo, we thank all of y'all for coming to give me some big hugs. Get in here. <laughs> 700,000, we have climbed over another plateau and it is all due to you good people. And today we're talking about survival breads. Yup, them breads that go way back into history, long, long ago. They sailed on the sea, they rode down the trail, hard tacking hot water cornbread. Now, if you missed last week's episode, we did a deal, a little history too, on Panda Campo, another survival bread. We had our friend, Arizona ghost rider, old Santee come in there and tell you about some Panda Campo. Well, folks, you're in luck. He's going to share some more history on what hard tack today. Some of the soldiers used to even take them things. They were so hard and bust them with their rifle stock just so they could crumble them up. But at the British Royal Navy, I like their ideal the best. They're going to give everybody a ration of that hard tack and a gallon of beer every day so you could soak the biscuits in the beer. Everything was good. So let's get us two cups of all-purpose flour. And we're going to use about two teaspoons of salt. Now, we're going to go ahead and we're going to mix some water. Now, this will vary on the amount of flour that you might have to use, but it's going to run about a cup and a half to two cups. And then we're just going to pour that back in there, one cup at a time, to see how much more that we might need. If you have a hair problem, you know, like fake hair, toupee, wig problem, something like that, you make you up some of this stuff right here and you smear it on top of your head and then put that on there, you have permanent hair. So let's just get us a little sprinkle of flour in there and let's go to work in this because we're gonna dry it out a little, but I don't want it so dry that it crumbles and cracks everywhere we're at, folks. I'm gonna jazz my half of this up a little. So I'm gonna take this one half, leave it in there. We'll go the old traditional route first. Be sure that you flour your board well and we're gonna need it a minute because I wanna dry it out just a tad more. Which way's the wind out of? If y'all can guess, you might win a prize. Which way's the wind out of, Duke? It's pliable, but it is not so dry it's cracking and it ain't sticking to my hands nowhere. So you need to roll this out, I would say one eighth to three sixteenths. Traditionally, a lot of them, when they're packaging these for the army or for the sailors or the cowboys, they might cut them with a biscuit cutter, just an old can, or they'd just slice them off square to where we could make these into regular cracker form. Then just come back and just cut you some, maybe two, two and a half inch squares coming down through there, cut them again. And can you follow me, Shan? Because I need a really important tool. I need a docking tool. What? A docking, a docking tool. tool. So follow me, Shan. Come on with me. Okay. We're going right over here to the willer tree. And what? We're getting a docking stick. You need to put you some little holes in there for a little even cooking. And it's going to give them a little faster cook time. Tack was a word that also meant also food, what we're having, it's grub, something like that. You wanna grease you a cookie sheet or a Dutch oven and just lay them in there. Now you remember that other half of dough that we had? Now me and Shan, we made some that we sort of liked better. Pat it down flat just a little. We're gonna add about two teaspoons of olive oil, which is about that much. Now go ahead and let's just fold that over just a little, just so we can get that oil incorporated in it. A little coarse ground salt, just a tad more, because I like it to have a little more salty flavor. And what? Some black pepper. Yeah. 
Now, just go to rack mashing that, or you can roll back across there to where all of it still stays in the place to where it's supposed to be. Now we have created something that's hard tack, but also it's got a little more moisture, so they're not going to break a tooth when you bite off them, but they have a little more flavor. Now you can add garlic salt to this, garlic powder, whatever you think, anything you want to add to it at this time, but folks, you can even make croutons out of these deals. But since we outside today, what am I going to do? I'm going to cook them in this 14 Dutch oven, so let's get after it. So you see me set a tall trivet out there, set our Dutch oven on there. We loaded it up heavy. Now remember, there's no rise in this. They're not going to puff up like a biscuit, so we're going to cook these extra hot. We are. So heavy coals bottom, heavy coals on top. We may have to rotate a little one way or the other, but make sure they're right at the outside edge of that Dutch oven. I don't want them under, but right at the outside edge. Won't take long out here. I don't think it'll take your 45 minutes to an hour like it does in the house. So we'll check them here in about 15, 20 minutes, see if we need to flip them over. Now, if you didn't have this trivet, and hey, you could do these pretty easy without, just rake your coals a little way from them, get out there about like this, set them down there, but you're gonna have to rotate more often because you are pretty close to that hot spot. And to learn a little more about this hard tack, Let's go over there and visit the Arizona Ghost Riders in Old Santee. Take her away, my friend. Hey there, Kent, Shannon, and the four-legged food tasters. Santee here. Hard tack dates back to the ancient civilizations. The term tack is British slang for food. And the hard part, well, we'll get to that in a second. G.H. Bent Cookie Factory, located in Massachusetts, was making hard tack in the early 1800s. Also called sea biscuits, it was mass-produced there for the Union Army during the Civil War. Both sides of the conflict would make a meal of it in interesting ways, like making mush or pudding. It gets hard when it gets older, but doesn't spoil, which makes it a well-preserved food. This is due to it having no moisture in it. Wagon trains taking our pioneers out west had it on hand, and it was definitely a portable food for those traveling on horseback, in the same vein as a package of saltine crackers. Mmm, yummy. Ranchers, soldiers, miners, and others would soak it in soups or coffee to make it palatable. Of course, you could just eat it and give your mouth a workout, essentially burning more calories than you're taking in. I wouldn't recommend it. These biscuits were also called molar breakers. You can see we had plenty of coals there. I just want them to get dried out good and get them a little browning, and they sure done that. I don't know if you can hear this when you get it in there. Folks, I'm I'm shocked. Now probably not, wouldn't taste too good on a ship after five months, but no, but right now. They're they're better than you think. I could see putting these in a soup, crumble them up like that. Method that me and Shan come up with. Well, I didn't have anything to do with it. Ooh. The salt, the pepper, a little bit of olive oil that we put in there. Folks, I'd take them right there and if it was me and I'd crumble them up just like this right here and I'd be chunking them in my salad that I'm gonna have after a while because, hmm, them ain't too bad, Shannon. You'll be wanting you some of these. Now folks, you can roll these out to where they're not as thin as what we made them. Leave them a little thicker, get up there a quarter inch, and don't cook them quite so long, and you'll have sort of a doughy center, but you'll still get that really good Christmas top. Christmas! Christmas! <laughs> Yay, Christmas! Here we go. You'll end up with that same Christmas that you get on the outside all the way around, but you'll have more of a little doughy, chewy taste in the middle. Well, as I promised, we're gonna get on with some more survival bread, hot water cornbread. Ooh, still deep-rooted Southern tradition it is. You can find it in a lot of restaurants down there today. It is a delicacy. Now, the Europeans come over to what we call this continent long, many years ago, and they were fascinated by the corn they found here and ground this up. The natives were, and the people, the early settlers, just grinding that corn, coarse ground, mixing it with a little hot water, a little salt, and some hog lard. Cowboys used to call it corn dodgers, corn po, hoe cakes. All we're gonna do to get this started is just two cups of yellow corn meal. Now, a lot of the Southern people that I talk to say they really like this even better if it is a really coarse ground corn meal. So we're gonna take about a teaspoon and a half of salt, which is about that much, mix all this together really well. To that, all you gotta have is some boiling water. 
Now it needs to be boiling because back then they would take a piece of old cold bacon grease or some big old spoonful of hog lard and just throw it in there. The hot water was to melt that and incorporate it well. Out here, I don't care when you broke it out of the ice chest or the box and you set it out here very long, it don't congeal no more, it is liquid. And we're gonna have about a tablespoonful of this bacon grease. Two cups of boiling water. Oh, that is hot. That's far as I'm gonna hold that, folks, right there. That's about as long as it's gonna go. Now, mix this up. You may have to add for consistency-wise a little more cornmeal or a little more water. But so we're going to add us a little more water and just a little more of that bacon grease and get to mixing this back up. Sort of like cream of wheat, Shen. But how long y'all been watching this channel? You know we ain't just going to just stick with hot water cornbread, don't you? We're going to jazz this up a little. We're going to take it to another level. What are we going to do? We're going to add some crumbled up bacon in there. Look here, folks, what just jumped up. It is a hatch green chili and a hash knife. So get him chopped up here a little because we're going to mix him in there. That green chili done been roasted. We got our 12 inch filled skillet over here. Got us oil up there about halfway. Now, I'm using a vegetable oil, but I added my leftover bacon grease that I had left right there to it if you want to bring out some more flavor. You want to try to run this 350 to 360 degrees. Now, you can do this two ways. Wet your spoon a little so that don't stick and it'll fall off there a little better. Take this and just spoon them over in there like that if you would like. Give them just a little mash. But also, the way that all of them used to do it is just wet your hands just a little. Just ball them up so it don't stick to you. Make them whatever shape you want. Don't get your finger in the hot grease. I think this first one, as you can see, this the edges have beginning to crisp up on here. He was the first participant. That's what I'm after, that good crispiness right there. Now, if you're trying to speed this process up a little and you want to, use a little less oil in here where it's more of a shallow fry than what I've got here. They'll cook a little faster and uh, you'll get crispier quicker. Looky there, how good them rascals look. Mm. I can smell that green chili from Hatch Country coming through. Now, old cookers, some of them old cowboys, when they used to make these, a lot of times they would roll them more cylinder shape where they were longer. They're not as apt to break if you be sticking them in your pocket, taking them down the trail. Oh, looky there. See that green chili? Still just a little of that moisture. That's what we're after. Let's have us a bite. I like them like that because I want to see a little of that doughy taste in the middle. I don't want it to be just crumbly dry all the way through. Folks, let me tell you what that would go really well with. Some of that collard green soup we made for New Year's Day. Mm, it would pair well with that. Mm, makes me want to do what? The corn shucking dance. Ooh, ooh. You need to pull them kernels off there. Get them over in the grinder and you grind it, go to town, you do. <laughs> folks, just because there was hard times and these folks were having to get by with what they got, doesn't mean that this ain't tasty, this ain't good. The cornbread, hey, it's still a delicacy served in a lot of restaurants down south, and I promise you're gonna like it. But that hardtack, who? It's gonna surprise you. I wanna have a very special thank you to the Arizona Ghost Riders over there. Be sure and check out their channel. Got a lot of short history deals on the Old West. But as always, we tip our hat and we take it plumb off to salute our veterans, servicemen and women that have kept that old flag flying above camp. It means the world too, as it does. We wanna thank each and every one of y'all for watching. Be sure to hit the whoo, subscribe, like, and share them videos. Cause as Mr. Rogers said, we need more good neighbors. Ring that ding dong bell and take some food over and let's right. meet them. God bless you each and every one for taking time out of your day to watch our video. And I'm gonna survive and see you down the survival bread trail. Right where I'm filming. A pile of poop. There's some poop. So That's a poop. calling card. This will be interesting. A welcoming gift. Little crunchy. Hey. Hi.
hey, this might be the new way to get your dog to clean their teeth. Duke doesn't have front teeth, so it's kind of hard to... Come on, Dukey. <laughs> But cornmeal was introduced way back in the Europeans come over to the American place over here and they t The American place? <laughs> As a matter of fact, back in 2010, I- Oh, oh, oh! Listen, Mary, you better get my lunch back. I'll be back. <laughs>